So, welcome back. Last class what we have done, we have found that if suppose a particle which is traveling horizontally and while the drag is opposing its motion. So, how so this is the particle which was traveling and suppose only drag if F d is only opposing the motion, we have derived the formula for the Stokes regime and found that v the par, how the velocity of this particle will be changing if the initial velocity is v naught. So, v naught into e raised to the power minus t upon tau, where tau is nothing but the response time. Okay. And similarly, we have defined that how the position of the particle will change and that will be nothing but it will be changing as per this formula that x will be equal to v naught tau, where v naught is nothing but the initial velocity of the particle to 1 minus e raised to the power t upon tau. Okay. And v naught can be written as a also the initial position of the particle. So, it can be x upon x s. So, starting position will be equal to 1 minus e raised to the power t upon tau. So, this says that how the particle position and velocity is going to change and this has a numerous application I have already discussed to track the motion of the particle. Now, what we have assumed here? We have said that while well, the uh, drag is acting. So, we assume that the particle is moving horizontally. If it is moving horizontally, gravity component will be 0. If there is any buoyancy force that is also not going to act because we are ma measuring the horizontal motion. So, now what we are going to do? We are going to complicate the problem little bit and now we will say that the same problem, but suppose particle is moving in downward direction. Okay. So, now if the particle is moving on the downward direction or I can say upward direction only the directions if I will change the direction what will happen only the direction of the forces will change. So, suppose if it is moving downward direction, the gravity is going to play F g that will be acting on the downside, this is the momentum. Okay. If I assume that initial velocity was there as a v naught, so this is momentum. Drag is going to oppose the relative motion if the air is stationary or the fluid in which the particle is settling or moving down is stationary, then definitely drag is going to move act upward F d. And if there is some buoyancy that is also going to act upward direction, buoyancy will always be upward. So, that will be the overall force balanced. So, if I write the rate of change of equation, the rate of change of momentum, okay, that is nothing but m dv upon dt is equal to say v particle, I will write it as a particle will be equal to summation of the forces. Now, what will be the forces which will be acting? So, this will be m p d v p upon d t and the summation of forces will be this will be equal to f g. Okay, I am taking downward as a positive that upward as a negative minus it will be f b minus f d. So, this will be the force which will be acting on the body and this is the initial momentum that will be equal to the m d b upon d t. Now, what we can do? We can do exactly same thing which we have done previously and what we are target is to derive the formula for the velocity and the change in the position. So, now what we can do? In this case, we can write it m p is nothing but mass of the particle that we can write it as a rho p density of the particle into volume of the particle. So, this is volume. I am writing it as a v cross, so that this velocity and volume does not get one should not get confused. So, m d v p upon d t. Now, what is f g? f g is what is the gravitational force. So, this will be again m of particle into g. So, that is gravitational force. What will be the buoyancy force? Buoyancy force will be rho of fluid into volume of particle okay, into g. So, that will be the buoyancy force and the drag force is nothing but we have already discussed half rho of fluid into C d into area into V square. So, this will be what? That is the drag force. Okay. So, now if we just try to solve this equation, we want to simplify this equation, what we can do? We can write it as a rho p and m p again here can be written as rho p into V of particle into g minus rho f v of particle into g minus half rho f c d a into v square. Now, here 
what I can do? It will be rho p minus rho f. I can take g and volume of particle outside minus half rho f c d a v square. Okay. Now, what is there? We have already this rho p into v p into d v p upon d t. Okay. Now, what we want? We want to write the terms in terms of the Reynolds number because we know that the c d is a function of Reynolds number. So, we know this c d is a function of Reynolds number. So, I will convert the whole equation in terms of the Reynolds number and to convert that the Reynolds number will be defined for the particle Reynolds number and which is being defined R e will be equal to what? It will be d p, it will be v p, it will be rho of fluid upon mu of fluid. So, this will be what? Particle Reynolds number. Okay? So, particle Reynolds number is defined it in this way, we have already discussed it earlier. So, this will be the particle Reynolds number. So, v p we can write it as mu f upon rho f into d p into R e p. Okay. So, d v p will be equal to what? Mu f upon rho f d p into d R e f R e particle. So, we can replace now this above equation and we can write this d v p in terms of the Reynolds number. So, this will be rho I will just write it. So, that is the shape of simplicity rho p v p d v p upon d t will be equal to we have derived it rho f rho p minus rho f into g into v p minus half rho of fluid a into c d into v square of v p square. Now, we will replace the v p with this and if you do it, it will be just rho p into v p this will be d r e upon d r e p upon d t and then you have to multiply it by mu f upon rho f into d p. This will be equal to rho p minus rho f into g v p minus half rho f a c d and v p can be written as mu f square upon rho f square into d p square into r e p. Now, we can simplify it, we can replace the v p, v p is equal to what? If the particle is spherical, it will be pi by 6 d p cube, area if the particle is spherical, it is pi by 4 d p square, we will replace a and v p here. So, we will get mu f upon rho f into d p into rho p and d r e p upon d t, this v p again this will be rho p minus rho f into g this will be equal to minus half rho f a is pi by 4 d p square. Okay. This will be c d mu f square upon rho f square into d p square into r e p square upon v p and v p we can write it as this term rho p minus rho f into g, this will be minus half rho p into pi by 4 d p square into c d, this will be mu f square rho f square into d p square into r e p and this will be pi by 6 d p q, this v p. Now, we will just try to simplify it. So, this, this for pi pi will be cancelled out this d p square, this d p 5. So, d p square, d p square here will be cancelled out, you will get the d p cube and if you just simplify this equation, what we are going to get? We are going to get it as if you just simplify it, it will be mu f into upon rho f d p into d r d p upon d t, this will be equal to here rho p is also there rho p minus rho f into g and this will be equal to minus half actually it will be 8 and this 3. So, 6. So, this will be 3 by 4 
I can write it 3 by 4 because this will be 8 and 6. So, this will be cancelled out. So, it will be 3 by 4 into C D into rho p into mu f square upon rho f square into d p cube into r p square. So, this also is a square. So, r p square. So, I hope I have written this correct rho p and you will get this. Now, we will further simplify it. We will write it as a d r e p upon d t term. So, what we are going to do? We are just writing it in terms of the c d into r e square. So, this if you will try to simplify what we are going to do, we are just going to divide by this term overall. So, this will be 4 by 3. Now, if you divide by the rho p, rho p rho p here will be cancelled out. So, this I will write it as, a, as it is mu f rho p upon rho f d p. Okay. Now, I am dividing by this term. So, 4 by 3 it will be rho f square d p cube upon mu f square okay, upon rho p. This will be equal to again here 4 by 3 rho p minus rho f okay, into g upon this will be rho p into mu f square into rho f into d p cube. Okay. This will be minus c d into r e p square. So, that is what we are going to get. Now, what we are going to do? We are just going to simplify this and this will be sorry here d r e p upon d t is missing. Now, we are going to simplify it. If you will simplify it, you will see that this will be what this is rho of fluid. Okay. So, if you will simplify it, you will see rho of fluid will be cancelled with here mu f square will be cancelled from this place rho p rho p will be cancelled out. What you are going to get? You are going to get it 4 upon 3 into rho of particle sorry rho of fluid into d p square into d p square this d p and 1 this will be cancelled out. So, rho of fluid d p square upon mu f into d r e p upon d t this will be equal to 4 upon 3 rho p minus rho f into d p cube into g into rho of fluid upon rho p into mu f square minus c d r e square r e p square. Now, this rho p should be cancelled out actually. So, rho f rho f and rho of particle where this rho of particle came here there is something somewhere something is wrong. This is also rho of fluid actually not rho of particle this is rho of fluid. So, that is why it is making um, wrong here rho of fluid will be there. So, if you do the rho of fluid this will be if I cancelled it rho of fluid rho of fluid 1 will be cancelled out. So, rho p will not be cancelled out here. So, pi by 6 rho of fluid so, this will be C d. Okay. Here, rho of fluid will be there instead of rho p. C d 3 by 4 rho of fluid C d mu f square rho f square d p cube upon r e square r e p square. Yes. So, this is rho of fluid. Now, if it will be rho of fluid, it will be just divided by the here rho of fluid. So, this will be rho of fluid again. So, rho of fluid will come here 1 rho of fluid because rho of fluid rho of fluid this will be cancelled out. So, only 1 rho of fluid will be there that will be here this rho p will go there will be no rho p here sorry please check it just do it and uh, here again it will be uh, once we will divide it it will be rho of fluid is square it will not be the square it will be only rho of fluid. So, it will be rho of fluid into d p cube mu f square okay, and there will be no rho p here. So, in that case if you will do that this will be what rho f rho f will be cancelled out and rho p will be as remain as it is. So, this will be not rho f it will be rho p. So, this will be rho p d p square upon mu f d r e p upon d t into this. Now, this number is called this number is called the Galileo number G A represented with G A and G A is nothing but Galileo number. 
and the Galileo number g a is nothing but it is the ratio of gravitational force to the viscous force. So, ratio of gravitational force to the viscous force. It means what? Where the fluid is settling, what is the importance? If the fluid is getting settling, so how much gravity is pulling it up and how much the viscosity of the fluid is actually resisting the motion of the particle. So, that is what is the Galileo number. It is very important once the settling is going on or anything, any object is moving under the gravity. So, it shows that how much is the gravity is playing role to pull the particle or uh, the particle and how much is the viscosity of the system or viscosity of the fluid is resisting the motion of the particle. So, that is the Galileo number. Now, we already know that tau which is response time is nothing but rho p into d p square upon 18 mu f. So, what we can do? This is what we can write it in terms of the tau. This quantity we can write it in terms of the tau. Now, if you do the replacement, this will be 4 by 3 into 18 tau okay, into d r e p upon d t. This will be equal to Galileo number minus c d into r e square, r e of particle square. So, this will be the equation you will get to see that how the particle motion is changing with the time. Now, if you just simplify it, this will be nothing but 24 tau into d r e p upon d t will be equal to g a minus c d into r e p square. So, this is the motion under the gravity, this will be the equation which will tell you that under the gravity how this r e p and this will be changed. Now, you can further integrate it, you can solve this problem again just by replacing suppose for the Stokes law, you can say this is nothing but 24 upon r e p you can just cancel it out, it will be 1 minus x upon 1 upon x Allen problem and you can solve it, you will get the equation which will be similar to whatever we have got earlier. So, you will get the equation for the velocity, you will get the equation for the position. So, you can calculate everything, whatever the way you want. Okay. Now, based on that, you can find it out that how the particle velocity will change or particle Renault number will change with the time, how the particle position will change with the time. So, that all calculation we can do again, okay. just suppose if I say that in the Stokes regime, for Stokes regime C d is equal to what 24 upon R e. Now, this will be 24 tau d R e p upon d t, this will be equal to g a minus 24 upon R e. If I do, I will say 24 R e p. So, what I will get? I will get this value or we can say that d r e p upon g a minus 24 upon r e p is equal to d t into 1 upon 24 tau. Okay. So, we can integrate it in terms of the d a and we can see that how the time is changing. Suppose, we can say that initial is r e naught if it is has certain velocity, final is say r e p then we can integrate it and we can find it out that how the Reynolds number will change with the time. The Reynolds number can be converted in terms of the velocity by using the same r equal to v rho d upon mu. We can calculate in terms of the velocity, we can find it out how velocity is changing with the time. Velocity can be converted in terms of dx upon dt, we can find it out how the position is changing with the time. So, under this influence again you can track the particle trajectory, you can track the particle velocity. But what we are more interested is in is suppose the term which we called as a terminal velocity or settling velocity. Now, what is terminal velocity or if the particle is moving down or settling down, I will say it as the same as a settling velocity. So, how it has been defined terminal velocity? Terminal velocity is being defined when all the forces are balanced. are balanced. It means what? That d v upon d t term is going to be 0. So, it means if I neglect that the initial transition period where the particle velocity is changing with the time and before it achieve a constant velocity, this equation if I neglect that part, if I put this d v by d t, the same equation what will happen? d v by d t is equal to 0. It means if d v by d t is equal to 0, then d r e p 
upon d t is also going to be 0 say particle velocity, then this equation will be modified and this equation will be g a minus c d r e square r e p square will be equal to 0 or you can say that r e p square c d is equal to g a. So, you can find it out the correlation here directly and for Stokes regime again if I do that. So, before going to the Stokes regime what I will do I will write just normal equation. So, this we can say that r e p is g a upon c d and v t if you do this r e p in terms of the velocity of the particle you can write it as a v of terminal into rho of particle okay, into uh, sorry rho of fluid into d of particle upon mu of fluid. So, will be equal to g a upon c d. So, you can write it as v t is nothing but g a into mu f upon rho f into d p upon c d. So, that will be the terminal velocity of the particle. In general case, you can write it, it in this way. The only thing is you have to find that the c d versus r e correlation and c d versus r e correlation you have to find it out with the terms that okay, how the c d is changing with the Reynolds number. So, you have to find the Reynolds number it will be a iterative solution. So, you have to find the Reynolds number or you have to guess the Reynolds number for that Reynolds number you will calculate the value of c d. Once you will calculate the value of c d you will get the value of v t. Now, calculate again with the new Reynolds number you can v t you calculate the Reynolds number and see that if the assumed Reynolds number and this calculated Reynolds number has certain difference. If they are same it means your assumption is correct your Reynolds number assumption is correct. If they are not same you choose the new v t Reynolds number the Reynolds number calculated by this v t and again keep on doing that iteration till you are not getting the number of value or Reynolds number within a certain percentage and that percentage error generally we take as a less than 5 percent. So, with the iterative solution you can get the value of v t. Okay. For Stokes regime you do not need to do anything you can further we can simplify it and that will be what the Stokes regime C d will be equal to 24 upon R e. So, now what we will do C d R e p square was equal to G a. So, we will say 24 upon R e p into R e p square it will be equal to G a. So, this will be R e p will be equal to what this will be G a upon 24. Now, you can open the G a, G a was nothing but rho p minus rho f into d p cube into g upon mu f square ok and it was this ok. So, this will be uh, this r e uh, this was 4 by 3 I think this 4 by 3 term we have included here. So, this will be 4 by 3. this was what the Galileo number was. Now, if you do that this was rho f. Now, you do this upon 24 you will get that r e p is nothing but we if you want to find the terminal velocity it will be this into 24 here will be coming. Now, v p r e p is nothing but v of terminal into rho of particle sorry rho of fluid into d of particle upon mu of fluid this will be equal to 4 upon 3 into this will be actually 18 I will write just this is 4 6. So, I will write it as a 1 upon 18 or I will write rho p minus rho f into d p cube into g into rho f upon 18 mu f square. Now, if you do that if I have to find the v t what I will do I will cut this mu and mu this rho of fluid and rho of fluid will be cancelled out and this d p will make it d p square. So, v t will be equal to what? It will be rho p minus rho f into g into d p square upon 18 mu f. So, this will be the terminal velocity in case of Stokes regime.
terminal velocity. So, this you have already done, but how this terminal velocity has been derived that is what I have just shown you that this is nothing but a Stokes regime how this terminal velocity will be defined or derived. So, this is rho p minus rho f g d p square upon 18 mu f. So, if you have a term you have to find the particle terminal velocity in Stokes regime you can use this formula directly everything is known if you know the particle diameter if you know the fluid under which it is being settled down if you know the particle density you can calculate the terminal velocity very easily. But what will happen in case of non this uh, Stokes regime you need to do the iteration. Now, again I would like to explain the procedure of this. So, this what we have done we have defined as V t is nothing, but this is equal to in the non Stokes regime this is G a mu f G a mu f upon rho f d p c d mu f upon rho f into d p into c d. This is in the non Stokes regime or any other regime. So, what we need to do? We need to guess the Reynolds number R e p for that R e p calculate C d value okay, from the chart or from the correlation which you are using for the C d value. There are different correlation has been given in the literature and we will discuss that correlation for the different drag force different C d values correlation is given. Calculate the C d value, calculate V t. I will write here more elaborately calibrate the C d value for guest R e p. Now, calculate the V t value, calculate R e R e p. Now, this I will say calculated R e p c which is calculated this is R e p g which is the guest one. So, this is c. Now, calculate that R e p c minus R e g R e p g upon say R e p g this you take as a mod if this error is less than 5 percent ok error is less than 5 percent then you assume that whatever the C D you have done is calculated is fine if it is more than 5 percent then now you replace if less than 5 percent say I will write it here then terminate terminate your program suppose if you are writing a code and you can write try to write a code for this that then it will be terminate if this is no if this is not correct then r e p will be equal to you say r e p g will be equal to r e p c and then you again go back and calculate this. So, you have to keep on repeating this loop till your v t your R e p which was guessed or an R e p which is being calculated does not come within the 5 percent range. So, that will be the iterative you can write a program and for any particle you can calculate that what will be the terminal velocity. The only thing is the determination of the C d and how to find that C d we will discuss it later to the different classes that how the C d correlations are given by the many people and depending on the correlation you can take a C d correlation and you can keep on doing the same iteration again and again till you are not converse to this value once you terminate to this value your program will be terminated. So, you can write your code you can we can discuss it in the assignment or I will give a assignment with which you can write a code if you want we will see that we will discuss it further to understand that how to do it. If you do not want to write a code you can still do it numerically by your own hand, but it will take time because every time you have to do the computation. So, you can still do it without writing a code you can write a code both are ok both up to you how you want to do it the overall idea is that how to calculate the C d value. Now, what we are going to do which is the most popular formula which we discuss or which we use here when the particle is being only settled in presence of f g and f d. So, if I am neglecting the buoyancy say if the rho f value is very very low and if I am neglecting the buoyancy effect then this f g will be equal to we can derive the formula for that and why I am deriving because this is what you have done in your undergraduate f d will be equal to f g and in that case half rho 
FD is what? Half rho of load into area into CD into V square. Now, because this is settling, we have as we neglected the dV upon dt term. It means all the forces are balanced. So, this will be either the settling velocity or the terminal velocity and this will be mg into g, m of particle sorry into g. Now, m of particle can be written as rho of particle into volume of particle into g and this can be written as rho of particle into pi by 6 dp cube into g. Now, we can solve this v t. So, v t will be what? V t will be equal to this values pi by 6 this. So, you can calculate this value this area will be equal to what? So, this is be rho p pi by 6 d p cube into g and this will be 2 times of rho f sorry this will be 2 times of rho f upon a into c d. Now, you can further simplify it and you can write it as this will be 3. So, rho p into pi d p cube into g upon 6 2 upon rho f and area can be written as pi by 4 d p square into c d. Okay. Now, if you further simplify it this will get what? This will be 8 and this. So, this will get up 4 upon 3 and pi pi will be cancelled out d p cube will be d p only. So, this will be d p. Okay. Now, this will be rho p, this will be g upon rho f into c. So, this will be what? You will get v t square value here. So, v t will be equal to what? This will be under root of this value. So, what you will get? You will get that formula for the v t versus c d. Again, you have to do the, if you do not know the c d value, so, what you have to do? You have to guess the Reynolds number. Again, the same loop will be there. You have to guess the Reynolds number. If you have to find that Reynolds number, guess the Reynolds number, find the CD value. For that CD value, whatever you have guessed, you can calculate that uh, uh, VT value. Again, from this VT value, you can calculate the Reynolds number. If both the Reynolds number is same, then it is fine. You can terminate your calculation or your program. If they are not same, you can take that newly calculated value of Reynolds number as a guessed value. Again, you can find the CD value for this. You can again find the VT value and you can keep on running this loop till your error is not coming within a margin and margin generally we take as a 5 percent. Suppose if there is a density difference, if we have to do that, so this will be 4 upon 3, it will be dp generally rho p minus rho f into g upon rho f into c d. So, you can use this formula again to calculate the terminal velocity. So, what you can do? What we have done now? In this part, we have seen that how the value of particle terminal velocity or particle settling velocity will change under the influence of different forces, how it will change for the Stokes regime and for the other than the Stokes regime how to calculate the particle terminal velocity in case of any flow and how to calculate the position of the particle, how it is changing with the time, how the velocity of the particle is changing with the time. If we want, do not want to neglect the transient term, if we want to calculate, we can do that. So, what we can do? We can calculate the particle position, we can calculate the particle velocity, we can change the find the particle position with the time, we can find the particle velocity with the time. So, you can track the particle in every domain if only drag is acting once we have seen and another case we have seen when the drag as well as the other forces like uh, buoyancy and gravity is also acting. So, with this calculation whatever we have done till now any particle which is flowing or the group of the particle is going flowing we can track the motion of the particle. For the group of the particle, you have to solve the equation for individual particles. The only change will be the CD value will be modified and we will discuss all these things that how the CD value will be modified for a particle cloud and based on that you can calculate it. So, it means what? Whether you say you have a particle which you have a 100 particles which are flowing together, you have to solve the 100 Newton second law of motion to track the particle position. 
Okay. So, whether it is a fluidized bed, whether it is a pneumatic conveying, whether it is a general uh, solid is suspended in the air and they are moving, you can track the velocity of those particles, you can track the position of those particles and if you know the velocity, if you know the position, you can also if you know the position, you can also calculate the fraction of the solids present there. So, you can understand about the system. So, all the gas solid system where the Lagrangian approach is there, you can solve the Navier-Stokes equation to get the terminal velocity, to get the settling velocity, to find how the position of the particle is changing with the time, how the velocity of the particle is changing with the time. Okay. So, now the typical value I am just seeing that giving you that about the terminal velocity. So, if suppose if I have a 100 micrometer dust particle. which is settled in air, okay, suspended in air, then its terminal velocity if suppose once the everything will be quiescent, the terminal velocity will be around 1 meter per second. I have assumed the density of the dust is equal to the 2900 which is the density of the sand. So, you will get it at a 100 meter, 1 meter per second and if suppose the rainfall which we have always seen the drop if suppose I am assuming that the droplet size of the rain is 2 mm which is very typical then the ut in air in air will be around 3 meter per second okay so that will be the settling velocity of the rain droplet if its size is 2 mm you will see that it is moving at a 3 meter per second velocity if you have a suspended particle 100 micrometer dust particle which is suspended in the air, you want to find that the terminal velocity, you will see that the terminal velocity will be in the range of 1 meter per second. So, that is the way you can do that. If suppose again, if suppose if we assume that the particle whatever we have assumed right now, either particle is moving horizontally or particle is moving vertically, suppose if the particle is moving at a particular angle. So, what you can do? The drag will act it in that angle you can say angle is theta, the drag F d will be here, you can say this will be F d cos theta, this will be component F d sin theta and you can do the balance, you can solve the horizontal component force, you can solve the vertical component force, you will get a particle horizontal velocity by using this motion with d b by d t you can get the vert particle vertical velocity by using this f d sin theta force and what you will have, you will have the particle x velocity, you will have particle y velocity, you can find it out the resultant velocity, magnitude and direction of the vector of the velocity and you can find that how the particle will move. So, is in the two dimensional domain, we are right now solving the one dimensional domain, you can easily convert this problem to two dimensional domain to find it out how the particle is moving with the time how the particle position will change with the time. So, in the more realistic cases, the domain is actually three dimensional, you can further do it in the third dimension, you can find you can just resolve it in terms of the vector, another angle will come instead of the theta, phi will also come, you can resolve the f d value in r theta and z coordinate or in x y and z coordinate and you can find it out the velocity in the x direction, velocity in the y direction, velocity in the z direction and the combined motion of the particle that where the particle is moving, how the particle position are changing. So, these are the more realistic cases which I am just giving the examples. So, with this what you can do? You can track the position of the particle with the time, you can track the velocity of the particle with the time in two dimensional domain, in three dimensional domain, in one dimensional domain. So, what you need to do? You just need to solve this. Now, the only problem is the it is computational very costly, computationally it will be very costly, we will discuss it again later the computational cost, why it will be computationally very costly, whatever we have done, we have done for one particle. But even if I take a small fluidized bed, say a diameter of 2 inch, a height of 20 centimeter, there will be millions of the particle will be present inside. If the particle diameter is say around 50 micron or 75 micron, I am talking about a group A particle, then millions of the particles will be present there. And then what you need to do? You have to solve these equations for the million of the particles. 
we have neglected the collision between the particle we have not seen the particle particle interaction this is the one way interaction we are just seeing that the drag is actually interacting with the mean motion of the particle the particle interaction the particle fluctuations we have not taken into the account so what you have to do you have to solve several equations together to get that how the position of each particle is going to change with the time how the velocity of each particle is going to change with the time if you know that you can calculate how the pressure is going to be modified with the time and you can have the complete statistics you can have a complete hydrodynamics or flow dynamics of the system we'll discuss again about these things later on right now the idea is the one dimensional motion that how to solve this so i hope now you can solve the particle motion in one dimensional whatever the forces is acting on it you can solve it now what is left is that external forces so external forces can be in many of the application what we see through the particle for the particle separation particularly we use either the electric field or we use the magnetic field to separate the particles from the uh, main fluid so suppose like a particle is suspended from like typical um, uh, this in, in industries where kind of uh, power plants where the coal particles are burned to get the energy now the coal particles are burned they form the flue gases the flue gases is being used to heat the water to generate the steam but at the end of the day some of the soot particles or ash particle is being carried away with the flue gases you cannot discharge those flue gases to the uh, the flue gases to the environment because they have the suspended particles you have to remove that suspended particle and to remove that suspended particle what we use we use electrostatic precipitator first we use the back filter but after a certain particle size when the back filter is not able to do cyclone separator is not able to separate then we need to use the electric field and what asp do it have a plate it has the plate where the electrical charge is being generated gas flows from there now because of this the particle has a certain charge and it moves either through the anode or the positive or negative depending upon what is the charge generated on the particle it will move on this side now in this case if external force is there similar thing is true with the magnetic particle magnetic force if the particle has some magnetic field or suppose it is have iron or something i can put a magnetic field i can put the magnet and then what will happen the particle will be moved towards the magnet so the motion of the particle will change so what we need to see now what we are going to do no, now next that in case in presence of the external field in external force field how the particle trajectory will change with the time how to calculate the particle settling velocity or particle velocity that when the external force field is also present so what we are going to do we are going to case take a typical case of the esp we will see that how in the esp the particle is going to be changing its motion so now what will happen again in case of this uh, uh, this esp what we are going to do we are going to take the electrostatic charge or uh, the coulomb forces inside and coulomb forces fc is being defined as q into e where q is nothing but is the coulomb and e is nothing but volt per meter or you can say the q is nothing but the charge on the particle on the particle and e is electric field intensity so that will be the coulomb forces if suppose if i put a electric field then this will be the force which will be acting on the particle so what we can do we can write the same equation again mp into dvp upon dt is equal to summation of the force now the summation of the forces can be written as this will be what are the forces which is going to act that is going to be fd that is going to act here plus fe which is the fc the coulomb forces or electric forces plus fg okay because once the particle will move vertically downward also so if we do that we can write it as mdp upon dt mp dbp upon dt will be equal to cd this will be half rho of fluid into cd into a into v of particle square plus q into e okay now that q into e will be there which will be plus or minus depending on the charge of the system plus mg okay 
Now, we can write it as we can solve this as BP's equation, we can solve these equations again further and we can write it in terms of the Reynolds number, we can calculate the Reynolds number how it is changing with the time, we can calculate the risk values because this Q e is constant, you can calculate, you can solve it the way we have solved it earlier. The only thing one more constant value will be added and you can have all those things. You can find it out that how the particle position will change with the time, how the particle velocity will change with the time. You can write it in terms of the Reynolds number also. You can calculate that how the Reynolds number is changing with the time. I am not doing this calculation. You can do it very easily. We have already done Q e is a constant force which is acting there. So, that value is just that is going to act as a constant. Okay. So, now we can have all this calculation, we can find it out. Now, in the more simplified case, if suppose I assume that the particle is moving horizontally, the Q e force is dominating over the m g, it is just moving horizontally, then in that case, the same equation will be modified as half rho f c d a v p square plus minus Q e. And this is the more realistic case, because in the electrostatic precipitator particle first move towards the wall gravity does not play much role, once it is stick to the wall then it will fall down because of the gravity. So, this is what is the more realistic case and you can again do the calculations, you now integration will be very simple, this is constant, you can convert everything in terms of the Reynolds number or you can write it, it in terms of the V p and D t and you can find it out M p you can calculate again as a rho p into V p. B p you can write it in terms of the d p. The way we have done I do not want to do it the same thing again and again. So, you can do this exercise take it as assignment I will put it as actually as an assignment in the um, on the next assignment which will be uploaded and if there is any problem we can discuss it further. So, what we are more interested is in once the velocity or this kind of the d v b d v p upon d t is equal to 0, it means all the forces are balanced and then the particle is moving with a particular thing. In that case, you can write it as half rho of fluid area of particle is pi by 4 d p square into c d into v p square will be equal to q into e. Okay. So, we can find it out or we, we instead of BP, we called it as a electric drift velocity or E s which is called electric drift velocity. Because now the particle is moving in influence of uh, the electric field and the drag is opposing the motion of that. So, that is the electric uh, drift velocity we call. So, this will be half rho so, V e s square will be equal to what q e upon 2 into rho f actually this will be 8 upon pi d p square into c d. So, if you want to find it out in the normal regime again what you need to do you have to guess a Reynolds number, you have to find the c d value, you have to find the V e s value with the V e s again you find the Reynolds number, if both are same then your guess value of Reynolds number is correct and your calculation of V e s is correct. If not the new D Reynolds number which you have calculate you again use that Reynolds number to calculate the C D keep on running the same loop again and you can calculate that what will be the electric drift velocity of the particle. So, if you write a same program or you make an excel sheet where the same calculation is being done, then you can simply calculate very easily that what will be the V e s. Now, in the Stokes regime, what will happen? The C d will be replaced by 24 upon R e and R e is nothing but 24 upon U e s because we are writing it in terms of this into d of particle into rho of fluid into mu of fluid. So, I will replace it here and if you do it, it will be V e s square will be equal to 8 into q into e upon this was rho of fluid. Okay. So, this will be rho of fluid into pi into d p square and C d value will be what? This will be 24, this will be mu f, this will be u e s d p into rho f. 
Okay. So, now this rho f rho f will be cancelled out, this u e s this will be cancelled out, this will be 3 and this d p and d p will be cancelled out. So, you will get v e s will be q e upon 3 pi mu f into d p. So, you will calculate the ESP value, VES value, the electric drift velocity values in terms of the Stokes regime if the particle in order number is less than 1, you can calculate in the general uh, regime. In general regime, the solution will be iterative, in the Stokes regime, the solution will be straightforward and what you have to do, you can just find that how the electrical mobility will take place. So, how the particle velocity will be there. So, that is the way the things can be defined in most of the cases in ESP, whatever the way we have discussed, the ESP is used only for micron or below particle size. So, the particle size should be less than 1.1 micron then ESP is used and most of the time we are in the Stokes regime because particle size is very very small, it pulls the pull the Reynolds number very low and you can use this value to calculate that what is the VES. If it is not in the Stokes regime you can this use this value, you can do the iterative solution and you can find it out that what is the ES value. Now, the only problem whatever we have discussed till now is the value of C d and I said that the C d value for the Stokes regime it is very clear it is 24 by R e other than the Stokes regime it is difficult to calculate either you have to go on the chart which will be changing with the particle diameter which will be changing with the particle size or particle shape. So, many authors have done lot of work to find the C d value and several C d correlation has been developed. Now, in the next time what we are going to do, we are going to discuss those C D correlations that what are those C D correlations, how those C D correlation has been developed, what is the advantage of each correlation and when to use which correlation. So, if you know the C D correlation, what you need to do? You can do all these calculations. If you have the C D correlation, you can just do the iteration, find the C D value from the correlation use the Reynolds number, guess the Reynolds number, find the C d value for that Reynolds number by using the correlation, find the U V e s value or U t value for that and then again keep on doing the iteration. So, we will see that the different drag laws which is being developed by many researchers for the different applications and how that drag laws can be implemented or can be integrated with this C d values to calculate the velocity of the particle with the time to calculate the position of the particle with the time or to calculate the settling velocity or terminal velocity. So, that we will discuss in the next class. Thank you. <laughs>